house at Sand Sound in Shetland is situated very close to the sea at the bottom of a very steep cliff. For them to get to their house, they have to take an access road over property belonging to Bruce Jamieson. That access road leads from uh, the main public road down to Dastoa, which is uh, the name of Jimmy and Alison's uh, house, uh, and it goes past um, a house called the Stoer House, uh, which belonged to Keith and Eloise Jamieson. Keith Jamieson being the son of Bruce Jamieson, who owns the land on which the access road is built. They drive down the road from the main public road to the top of the cliff, park their motor vehicle there, then access the actual property by going down a very steep flight of uh, stairs uh, to the store uh, itself. Then suddenly, in August 1998, the Jamiesons decided to straighten up a garden wall and realign it in such a way that it would actually eat into the access road that Mancreefs used and completely cut off the parking area that they used. There seemed to be no uh, agreement on the Jamiesons' part uh, in order to uh, change the line of this wall and the Mancreefs were left with no real option but to uh, raise court proceedings. When the case uh, was erased in Laird Sheriff Court, it concerned the question, uh, the real question at the time was the question of interdict, i.e. stopping um, the Jamiesons from building a wall across the Mancreefs' um, access a uh, route to end parking area. Sheriff Colin Scott Mackenzie decided in favour of the Mancreefs. He decided that there was uh, a servitude right to park linked with their right of access to the property. By giving this decision, uh, he in effect uh, made an important step forward in the development of Scots Hall. When the case was heard in the court session, um, the two of the three judges found in favour of the Mancreefs that they did indeed have a, a servitude right to park uh, linked to their access rights. Uh, that was Lords um, Marnock and Philip. However, Lord uh, Hamilton uh, gave a dissenting opinion. He took a very strict line, uh, taking the view that um, Scots Hall just did not recognise the servitude right to park, uh, and that was that. Um, but with two uh, to one, Mancreeps were still successful uh, before the court session. No doubt it was Lord Hamilton's dissenting opinion that gave the Jamiesons some hope that they might be able to overturn uh, the court decision's decision before the House of Lords. And so uh, we ended up in the House of Lords. Um, in July, two days uh, of submissions were given by QCs to five law lords. And now we simply await the decision of those law lords as to whether the Mancreeps F a right to park linked to the right of access uh, and because it is the highest court in the land that decision uh, will be of great importance not only to the Creeps uh, and the Jamesons but also um, from a wider point of view uh, in Scots Hall. Well, from the point of view of the law, this is a hugely important case. Um, people have been arguing for years uh, in Scotland as to whether the class of servitudes is closed. In other words, can you have new servitudes that you haven't had uh, before? And the Scottish Law Commission certainly came round to the point of view that you couldn't, and they even promoted uh, an act of the Scottish Parliament to create a statutory means of creating servitudes. Um, in the event their lordships decided that the class of servitudes is not closed and indeed you can have a new servitude and they found that um, you can indeed have a servitude of parking. Um, because it's such a contentious matter also in England where the law is quite similar, they also took the opportunity to clarify the law of England and uh, to determine that you can have an easement of parking in England as well. 
so there's going to be very big repercussions in the law from this. It's quite a departure. First new servitude in Scotland for hundreds of years and settled an academic argument that's been raging in both Scotland and England. I've been involved in this case for three of the nine years that it's been going on. And my involvement was in the court of session and in the House of Lords. It's a pleasure to be involved and very interesting to see um, particularly the House of Lords in action. As far as the case uh, itself is concerned, it's obviously of uh, great personal significance to this Lord Free. I think its general significance remains to be seen. Uh, there are one or two aspects of it that uh, may be capable of being developed, but the Lords have been quite careful to make sure that uh, this is really quite specific to its facts, so we need to wait and see how it develops in the future. Well, we're um, obviously delighted that the House of Lords has found unanimously in our favour five judges uh, and no dissenting judges, and that's a tremendous uh, decision. It's a vindication of our position and our right to access and parking at our house. Uh, but it's gone on far, far too long. It's nine years and it's been at a tremendous financial and personal cost. Uh, but at least justice has been done at the end of the day.